capture dreamy film-like vibes straight out of a camera. It's got a lot of bloom, softens hard edges. Hmm. Looks pretty promising. Yep, yep, yep. So these things are pretty cool. They're called the Cinebloom Moment Diffusion Filters, and they make pretty dreamy photos. They soften the hard edges, they bloom light, and the main selling point is that you don't need any post-processing. However, they cost ranging from around 45, there's some for 40, but around $50 for the average filter. And that's that expensive, but they're all in back order. Hello. So the results I've seen with the Cinebloom has been pretty, they've been pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie, they're really, really good at capturing the kind of dreamy vibes of a maybe a cinematic shot, things like that. So the question is, can you get these effects without buying the Cinebloom filter and not paying forty, fifty, or sixty dollars for this? And the answer is yes. Yeah, this actually same effect I've been doing a lot recently in Lightroom. You don't need the filter. There's actually a couple tools, a couple tricks that I'll show you in Lightroom right now on how to achieve this effect without splashing out 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 bucks. And you don't have to wait for the back order. You can just jump right into it. And it works for photos and also video. So here we are in Adobe Lightroom. This is Adobe Lightroom Classic. And what I wanted to show you guys today was how to mimic the Cinebloom diffusion effect in a regular photo taken without the filter and show you guys kind of the basic steps and just a few quick tips that'll help you achieve this look without having to buy a specific filter. So right off the bat, let me go ahead and show you, uh, this is kind of the before and after, the final effect uh, that I'll apply to this image here specifically. So this image, as you can see, this is the photo that was taken originally. And this on the right is the photo taken with the bloom effect added on in post in Lightroom. The key features of this Cinebloom effect are obviously the bloom and usually the highlights behind an image or behind the subject, and then still maintaining a level of contrast and clarity in the image that keeps your photo sharp and doesn't look too distorted. And so uh, let me go ahead and show you guys exactly how to achieve this. This, For reference, there's another example here I'm gonna show you. This is again, this is this is flipped right here, but maybe this is a better one. Here we go. This is before and this is after. And you can tell, you can tell that the before is noticeably different actually than the after. The after you can tell is much more bloom in the uh, background of the subject. And it just gives it sort of that cinematic look that you can achieve without having to splash out cash for uh, a diffusion filter. Okay, so again, this is the before, here's the after. And let's go ahead and I'll show you exactly how to do it on this image. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add your favorite filter or color tone it however you'd like to do it. I actually have four film presets that I often use uh, and these are personally developed by me and I'll link them actually below in my description for this video. But let's go ahead and add one of these filters here. I'll choose maybe, let's see, the first one looks pretty decent. And then you just go ahead and tweak this. What I usually do for these images is I take off the grain and then, okay, so let's sort of tweak this preset. Let's raise the exposure. Uh, maybe let's play around with the white balance here a little bit. And, okay, so starting from here is essentially what you can do once you've added your film preset, what you need to do to achieve the bloom effect. So specifically, first, we're going to look at the highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. So let's play around with these first. So what I like to do is I like to blow out the highlights and also the whites as much as possible. So when you blow out the whites, this gives it sort of a dreamy effect. And alternatively, I'll sometimes also add the shadows a bit as well. Okay, so already this image looks a bit more cinematic, but the problem here is that you still don't have that bloom effect that you're kind of looking for. And so this is a trick here, clarity. What people often talk about is adding clarity to images and that creates sort of an HDR effect. That's not what we're looking for today. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bring the clarity down almost halfway down. I like to go all the way up to like negative or minus 60. Here, maybe we'll keep it on minus 40. Let's look at a before once again. 
too crispy and then we'll bring it down to like negative 60 and already wow you can tell it's super dreamy but the problem here is that the dreaminess kind of affects the subject as well so what we'll do to combat that was that we'll actually up the contrast a little bit so that way you keep details sharp in the actual in, in the foreground but the background is very dreamy like if you go too much it kind of distorts the edges around the image and the person doesn't look as realistic. I mean, you might like that, but I like to keep it anywhere from anywhere from maybe 50, 40 to 60 is like my sweet spot range. And then of course you can go ahead and fix this image for instance. I think it's a little bit too green, too yellow. So I'll take down some of the yellows. And then sometimes I'll add some blue to kind of give it, especially at night when you get like city lights, the blue definitely adds a little bit. Let me pull that down. So that's essentially it. That's all it is. It's the two key elements here are taking down the clarity and alternatively upping the contrast while also blowing out the highlights and the whites and playing around with the shadows to your liking. And so once again, let's do before and after. Uh, that's the before. And then after you do see on this one, I had the clarity down minus 52. I had the contrast plus 52. Usually I do this inversely keep these inverse, and then play around with the, the coloring. And this is the effect that you can get from doing this. Let me show you one more. Again, here is a before and here's an after. And let me go through these steps one more time real quickly. So here again, let's choose quickly a film preset that'll look pretty cool. Come down, take down my grain that I have automatically. For this one, I'm bring the exposure up a little bit. I'm going to bring the, blow the highlights out a little bit more actually. Maybe actually I'll bring the exposure down here and blow the highlights up here. This image is a little bit too orange. I'll bring down the orange just a little bit, just a little bit. I wanna bring the shadows up a little bit. And then finally, the most important part, we'll bring the clarity down. Let's say to this one, if I went to 70, it'd be too much. As you can notice, it kind of looks too unrealistic. So I'm going to bring the clarity down to, let's say, minus 40 looks pretty good. And the contrast up a little bit. Exposure is a little bit too overexposed. And then you can always go and do your small brush effects where you can actually uh, lighten certain areas. Maybe these areas a little bit. Done. And then you have your final image. This one maybe a little bit too orange. Bring it down a little bit. A little bit too much exposure. But that's sort of the, the look you're looking for. Again, we've pulled down the clarity and pulled up the contrast almost inversely proportionate. So the amount of clarity you pull down, the amount of contrast you put up, add your favorite film filter, and that's it. That's how you achieve the Cinebloom effect, this bloom, uh, dreamy sort of effect in any photo. And the pros of this is that you can add this onto photos that you've already taken in the past without the filter, and you can add this to photos. You can even set this as a cube file and set this to your Premiere Pro projects. There's a lot of things you can do with this. Again, this is the before, and then this is the after. And this one, we hadn't put the clarity down too much, but if we do a little bit more clarity, turn up the contrast a little more, that gets you that very, very cinematic, dreamy effect uh, as portrayed here. Hope you guys enjoyed this small little tip, and I'd love to see what you guys use it for. Go ahead and tag me in the creations you guys make. Uh, I post a lot of these sort of photos on my Instagram. It's at GakuYen on Instagram. I'll link that below as well. So go ahead and make sure to give me a follow and go ahead and like this video and also add a comment to see if there's anything else you want me to kind of touch up on. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications for my channel and I'll be posting more content very soon. Thanks guys.